the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution happy morning students i know you all are happy so today's chemistry class it's going to begin with a small story for you i hope you all like stories right because uh, since i'm not seeing you i felt like i want to start the class with a story see there was once a philosophy professor who just went to the class with a jar a glass jar and he started adding the rocks inside big big stones and he asked the children whether the jar is full and the children they he they said yes so what he did is he then started adding small pebbles inside and he just gave the jar a small shake so that the pebbles could disperse inside and remain somewhere settled and he asked the children again whether the jar is full and the children told yes he then took some sand and he then poured it into the jar to make sure that all the empty spaces are filled he then asked the same question to the children whether the jar is full so the children told yes so he asked the children what did you understand from this children were just silent they were not able to give up any response what could be the moral of this story children see the jar is our life jar is our life the rock pebbles and the sand these are the things that we fill in our life the rock are the major projects in our life like giving value for important things relations spending time with your loved ones or i would also say maintaining proper health because when you don't give importance to your education or to your family we will not gain anything our life will become meaningless like the jar will not have any meaning similarly if you don't take up a good care of your health again our life will become meaningless so life will have a meaning only when we have major part with the rocks with which we can only survive and without which the life will not have any meaning the pebbles are the things which are not permanent which comes and goes in our life like our job it can be the house the hobbies your friendship and so many other things without which you can also still survive but that doesn't play a very important role of course i would say job plays an important role but that keeps on changing for many people right the third one pebbles are the ones which are the material possessions in your life like insignificant small things that we do in our life for pleasure that is watching television browsing through the social media so without which we can still survive this doesn't play a very important role in our life so out of this rock pebbles and sand if we start filling the jar with sand in initially we will not get room for the pebbles and the rocks so what i want to say is children our life we are responsible for that when we are start adding important things in our life when you give room for significant things in our life we will have a real meaning 
If we start giving importance for small insignificant things in our life, definitely we will be out of the room to search for valued ones. So children, if you want your jar to be filled with complete happiness, you start filling the jar with good amount of rocks. And still, if you are able to take care of the rocks properly, then of course you can start giving value for pebbles and sand which are playing a very minor role in your life. So with this, we are going to start today's class with atomic spectra. Atomic spectra, in last class we were learning about this uh, Planck's constant and how different different scientists were giving the meaning for the nucleus and the electrons around them. What do you mean by atomic spectra? We were studying about the particle nature and wave nature of light. You know children, this light, the speed of the light actually depends on the nature of medium. Rarer medium, denser medium we say. So the speed of the light is controlled only by the nature of the medium. If it is so denser, then it de uh, deviates or refracts differently. If it is rarer, again it deviates in a different speed. When a ray of light is passed through a prism, what happens? The shorter wavelength wave will bend more than the longer wavelength. That is the wave which has got the shortest wavelength will be bending more when compared to the waves which are having a longer wavelength. When any ordinary light will contain wavelength of all the visible range, what are visible range? Nothing but visible colors. You would have seen different different colors appearing, right? That is just because of the nature of the white light which is being passed through the prism. These colored bands, colored bands you can see violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, different different colors with different different wavelength. These are called as spectrum. What do you mean by spectrum? These colored bands are called as spectrum. Now red color which is having the longest wavelength will be the least deviated and violet color which is having the shortest wavelength will be most deviated right this is the longest wavelength which will have the shorter frequency when i say short wavelength will have the higher frequency they are inverse actually so continuous spectrum means what continuously it start changing when i say from violet to red color it is called as a continuous spectrum. It starts from 7.5 into 10 power 14 hertz. Violet becomes indigo. Violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Vibgyor, that's a rainbow that you see in the sky. Violet becomes indigo. Indigo changes to blue. Blue changes to green. Green changes to yellow. Yellow to orange and orange becomes red. That is how a visible spectrum is created on the sky. That is just because of the deviation of the white light into a continuous spectrum. Now in this class, that is in this atomic spectra, we will be learning about different types of spectrum like line spectrum, emission spectrum, absorption spectrum, which will help us to find out what it is exactly. And then we will study in detail about hydrogen, how the electrons get excited. We will see what is meant by emission spectra and absorption spectra. The word emission means giving out, emitted, evolved or given out. So what is the definition for it? Spectrum of radiation, when it is sent through a substance, it will absorb the energy. Now that is called as emission spectra. Whichever is being absorbing some amount of energy, it will also release it. That is called as an emission spectra. In your textbook, you should mark this under the lines. Spectrum of radiation emitted by the substance which has absorbed the energy. When it is being excited, when it gets energy, it will absorb some amount of energy and then it will start emitting some radiation outside. Those are called as emission spectra. Now, what type of substances will get the energy like atoms, molecules and ions? How can you make it gain the energy by heating it? Once you heat the sample, it gains the energy and it starts getting emitted in the form of radiation. Now, these emitted radiation which is being absorbed 
will be recorded. So through the recordings we will find out what are the different types of radiation that has been emitted, what are their parameters with respect to wavelength and frequency. Next one is absorption spectra. When I say emitted here something is being given out. What do you mean by absorption? Something I am taking inside. See absorption spectra is also called as a photographic negative of emission spectra. What do you mean by negative? You know a negative film of a uh, photograph. How does it look? Before and all we have a roll. So the negatives of the roll you will see uh, if you can browse through the net you will find out how does it look. There will be some empty spaces there, dark spaces. So when a sample is being given with a continuum of radiation, it will absorb the radiation of certain wavelength. See I am a sample. Now I have been continuously giving some amount of energy. But I don't want all the energy, I take only radiation of certain wavelength. So whichever I am taking inside, the radiation absorbed by the sample, absorbed by me, will be the missing wavelength which is in the form of a dark spaces in the bright spectrum. I have a bright spectrum but I have some dark spaces. See these are the dark spaces. So these dark spaces are the spaces which have been absorbed by the sample. Those we called as a negatives of the original spectrum. If it is a normal emission spectrum everything will be bright. Since it is absorbed certain wavelength which it likes, so those absorbed spaces will be the missing spaces which will be in the form of a dark lines or dark spaces. So those are called as absorption spectra. So that will also be seen in the continuous spectrum. Now we will learn, see the study of emission, when I say spectra, spectra, something which is important is spectroscopy. The study of emission and absorption spectra together, we call that as spectroscopy. So now we will study in detail about atomic spectra. And see emission spectrum I told you it can take, take place in atoms, molecules and ions. But when those are in the gaseous phase because we know it can be a solid, it can be a liquid, it can be a gas also. So when my substance when my matter is in gaseous state the emission spectrum will not happen there is no continuous spectrum that is there is, it is not a continuous emission of all the radiations of all wavelength that is happening because we know when a white light is being passed through a prism continuous colors comes with all discrete frequency and wavelength but if it is in the gaseous form, it will not be a continuous spread of wavelength. They emit only specific wavelength. Only certain wavelength are being emitted with dark spaces between them. So whichever is emitted, we know those are emitted radiation. Otherwise, when it happens like this, we call such a spectrum as line spectrum or atomic spectra because emitted spectrum is somewhere where the substance after absorbing the energy will emit the radiation in the form of bright lines but here since the only certain wavelength are being taken like absorption spectra but otherwise there are dark spaces between them in the form of lines so we call them as a line spectra or together as atomic spectra. Now what, why do we have to study this line spectra or atomic spectra? What is the use of it? Simple because they help us to study about the electronic structure. See children, electronic structure you have been studying about nucleus is there, there are electrons surrounding them in different circular path which are called orbit. But we don't know what about the energy level of the electron, whether it has the same energy does it get excited so to study about each and everything in detail this line or atomic spectra is very very useful it helps us to identify unknown atoms because each element has a unique line spectra see i have certain characters there might be my friend who will be different from me i cannot expect the same behavior of mine with that teacher also like all of you are unique one girl will dance well, another will sing. So we have different different characteristics for different different people. Similarly, 
each element will possess a unique line spectra with that we will be able to identify the unknown atom just like your fingerprint with the fingerprint we can identify the people unknown people so like that this is useful for finding out the unknown atoms now rubidium cesium thallium indium gallium and scandium were found out only through this spectroscopic methods so these were the most important elements which have been found out through the spectroscopy methods also helium's presence in the sun sun has got helium it has also been found out through spectroscopy so when i said helium now we are going to study about the most important element in the periodic table the first element in the periodic table that is hydrogen of course that's a very uh, different element because do we don't say it belongs to that block this block or any block hydrogen and helium are kept at uh, two ends of the periodic table and they have unique properties so now we will study in detail about line spectrum of hydrogen which is a very very important question for the board exam so children the next topic be very careful write the notes wherever it is required definitely i'll be posting video about the line spectrum for your better understanding also now we will see about line spectrum of hydrogen children actually the cloud is i mean uh, sky is very cloudy and i feel like uh, you are able to see the board clearly children because i feel somewhat dark as the weather has been turned dark it's going it's raining actually outside and uh, i hope you are able to see the board clearly if you have any confusion you can refer the textbook as well children okay so kindly bear with me for that and uh, now let's get back into line spectrum of hydrogen here see when a gaseous hydrogen is present and through which we are sending an electric discharge into it the hydrogen atoms which are present in the um, substance will dissociate associate means joining dissociate means splitting breaking so it will break and it will start emitting electromagnetic radiation with discrete frequency different different frequencies of electromagnetic radiation will be emitted by the hydrogen molecules which get break or dissociated when an electric discharge is passed through the hydrogen atom that hydrogen spectrum we co has got a series of lines what are those series of lines these are the electromagnetic radiation now balmer was a scientist who at 1885 gave an expression to find out the wave number for each series these series of lines were named after each discoverer and this was the formula used to calculate the excitant ex excitant of the electron the electron get excited so when it gets excited from one level to the other level what is happening what will be the wave number of that particular excitation will be calculated by using this formula we know this is wave number wave number is equal to 109.677 into 1 by 2 square minus 1 by n square centimeter inverse which is the unit for the wave number where n here will be an integer which is equal to 3 or greater than 3 so this formula you should remember but what happened later those series of lines they were actually phi spectral series of lines when uh, when we are studying about the hydrogen spectrum but out of the five lines balmer series were only in the visible region which means that was the only region which we could see directly with our naked eyes but rest of the other things you couldn't see because those were not visible they could be ir rays and uv rays also so this scientist johns ridberg gave a modification to this formula because he studied that this hydrogen atoms when it gains some energy we know hydrogen has got only one electron in the one the first orbit right after the nucleus see this is my hydrogen atom this is my nucleus assume this is my first energy level i have only one electron but there is a second orbit also but this can jump to my next level so the scientist thought this might not be the only formula which i can give to study because it cannot go only from this level to the next level 
it can go from my first orbit to second orbit it can go from first orbit to third orbit and it can go from first orbit to the fourth orbit also so what he did is he did a modification to the formula he did wave number is equal to 109.677 into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square centimeter inverse where n1 is equal to 1 2 3 4 and n2 will be n1 plus 1 n1 plus 2 see if this is 1 this will be 1 plus 2 3 if this will be 2 this will be 2 plus 2 4 so when you take an lcm why always smaller is written here and the bigger number is written here because when you cross multiply you should get a positive wave number otherwise if you put 1 by n2 square minus n1 square this whole will become negative to avoid negative we write 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square so children we will be getting formula i mean problems in this where the two level of excite will be given to you that is an electron goes from the second level to the fourth level or electron will be jumping from first level to the third level so you will put one here you will put three here you understood children so this is the uh, formula given by Rydberg and this was also called as Rydberg's constant it can come in one mark question what give the value for Rydberg constant so 109.677 is the Rydberg constant now we will study in detail about the five series spectral lines of hydrogen children uh, these are the five series of spectral lines of hydrogen which has got the simplest line spectrum the first one lyman which is in the form of uv rays second one balmer as i told you that's the only visible region third one pastion fourth one bracket fifth one p fund and all the 3, 4, 5 are IR rays. So these were name of the discoverers who were found these lines of hydrogen spectrum. Lyman, Balmer, Passion, Bracket and P fund. This definitely you should memorize because it comes in one mark question. Definite, definite question for Bohr. Okay. Now this Bohr was also a scientist who told that each element has got a unique line spectrum and it has got a regular way of giving the radiation out. So then he was able to do some experimental verification to calculate what are the things that we can find out once we study the line spectrum of any element. So hydrogen having the simplest line spectrum, he said electron in the hydrogen atom actually revolve around the nucleus in a circular path which are called as orbits. The energy of the electron in a particular orbit will not change with time. It remains the same. But when it gets excited, when it gains some energy, it moves from the lower energy level to a higher energy level. But when it moves to the next energy level, a new energy is formed and that energy remains constant at that particular time. So that for that only, the frequency of radiation absorbed or emitted see I am an electron I gain some energy I go to the next energy level when I come back again to my same energy level I emit radiation so the energy which I absorbed or the energy which I gain will be find out in the form of frequency how the difference in the energy between the two level where E2 minus E1 which is equal to Delta E so E2 is a higher energy level E1 is a lower energy level divided by H which is called as a Planck's constant which we already studied later. I am sorry before. Okay. So E2 minus E1 by H and this formula we call as a Bohr's frequency rule which is very important to calculate the frequency of radiation which is emitted or absorbed during the uh, movement or transition from one energy level to the next energy level. Now we will find out, now we will learn some more postulates of Bohr's model with respect to line spectrum of hydrogen. We were studying about the postulates of Bohr's model in that the angular momentum of electron was also able to found out. What is momentum? Momentum we know mass into velocity is momentum. But this MBR, angular momentum because it is moving in circles. So the angular momentum of electron was also being calculated by the formula Me, this mass of the electron, velocity into radius, where n is into h by 2 pi. 
where we know pi is equal to 3.14, h is the Planck's constant, n is to the energy level with which it belongs to, the electron, first orbit or second orbit or third orbit. So after doing so many postulates, Bohr was doing a final calculation about hydrogen and what he found out was the stationary states for electron are numbered. See this is my nucleus, so this is my first stationary state, this was given 1, the second stationary state was given 2 and the third stationary state was given 3. So these were called as the principal quantum number which we will be studying in the later topics. So this is called as a principal quantum number. It was also said that we can calculate the radii of that particular electron uh, where Rn is equal to n square A0 where the value of A0 is equal to 52.9 picometer which is the Bohr's first orbit that is first stationary orbit which is not moving, electron is not moving, the energy is the same. So the value of A0 will be 52.0 picometer which is the Bohr's orbit and the value for n is equal to 1 because that is my first principal quantum number. And then what did he say? The most important parameter which is the energy of the stationary state. How you can calculate it? By Rh minus Rh 1 by n square. See here Rh value is given as minus 2.18. So minus into minus will become plus. So it is minus 2.18 into 10 power minus 18 joule. This is a different constant value because we studied 109.677 with different formula. 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. If you see only 1 by n square in your question, it is definitely you should put this value for your Rydberg constant. The next one is it can be applied to element which is having one electron because uh, see always we know that the periodic table when it was designed for the first few elements it was very easy. But as the elements get complicated more and more, the theories started getting failed. That's why new theories arose. But what happened here is, after studying the line spectrum of hydrogen, Bohr decided to study with other elements but which were having only one electron. Because at a time, you could study the spectrum lines with only one electron which is getting excited. Not all the electrons together jumping from one or more level which will not be easy for us to understand. So he studied with helium plus means again one electron, lithium 2 plus, lithium atomic number 3. When it loses two electron, it will have only one electron. So these were the elements which were having only one electron. I would say ions rather than cations after losing electrons. The last one postulate what he studied about hydrogen was even the velocity of the electron in a particular orbit was able to calculate it. You can also calculate with what velocity the electrons are traveling in that particular orbit, the circular path. So these were only with respect to hydrogen. But when other elements were started coming, the theories were not giving us a promising answer for all the spectral lines. So now we will be learning about explanation of line spectrum through the video because jumping from one level to the next level, how the real uh, energy change takes place, you will see the video for the better understanding. We will then study about the limitations of Bohr model and get back to quantum mechanical model. When an electric arc is passed through hydrogen gas at low pressure taken in a discharge tube, energy is emitted from the tube in the form of light. This ray of light emitted from the tube is passed through a prism. The rays of light on passing through the prism produce an emission spectrum with many distinct bright lines at different frequencies of the visible spectrum. This emission spectrum of hydrogen is called its line emission spectrum. The appearance of spectral lines at different frequencies hints towards the existence 
of different energy states or levels in the atom. Let's examine the formation of the line spectrum of hydrogen in view of Bohr's model of the atom. According to Bohr's atomic model, the atom possesses fixed circular orbits or levels with definite energies in which the electron revolves around the nucleus. The different energy levels are numbered as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. The lowest possible energy state of an atom is known as its ground state. Hydrogen atom possesses only one electron. Thus, the ground state of hydrogen atom is n equal to one energy state. On absorbing a certain definite amount of external energy, the electron in the ground state of the hydrogen atom jumps to any of the possible higher energy states. When an electron jumps from the first energy level to the second, it is called the first excited state. When an electron jumps from the first energy level to third, it is called the electron's second excited state and so on. All the higher energy states are called excited states. Since these excited states are unstable, the electrons have a tendency to fall back down to a lower state by emission of a photon of energy equal to the energy difference between the two levels. This emitted photon can be detected by a photographic plate as the photon forms a line on striking the plate. However, an experimental study shows that hydrogen forms a large number of lines in the spectrum. Now, the question arises as to how hydrogen with only one electron orbiting the nucleus produces a large number of spectral lines. The experimental sample of hydrogen gas in the discharge tube consists of a large number of atoms. Electrons in these hydrogen atoms absorb different quanta of energies and jump to different energy states. There is also a possibility that the electron may jump to its ground state following different paths. Let's look at the possible paths for an electron in the third excited state jumping to its ground state. The electron from the fourth energy state can jump directly to the ground state or it might first jump to the second level followed by another jump to reach the ground state. Alternatively, an electron can first jump directly to the third level and then jump to the ground state or move through three successive energy jumps to reach the ground state. Thus, due to the energy difference between the excited and ground states, a large number of lines are formed in the hydrogen emission spectrum. When an electron jumps from any higher energy state to n equal to 1 energy state, the series of lines formed falls in the ultraviolet region of the electromagnetic spectrum. These lines are called the Lyman series. When an electron jumps to the second energy state from higher energy states, the series of lines formed falls in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. These lines are called the Balmer series. The Parshan series is formed 
when an electron jumps from any higher energy state to the third energy state. This series of lines falls in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. When an electron jumps from any higher energy state to the fourth energy state, the series of lines falls in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. These lines are called the bracket series. When an electron jumps from any higher energy state to fifth energy state, the series of lines formed falls in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. These lines are called the Fund series. Let's quickly summarize the formation of the different spectral lines of the emission spectrum of hydrogen. We are into the quantum mechanical model of atom where we are going to study two important principles. One is the dual behavior of matter. The next one is the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. In dual behavior, the name dual behavior. In fact, the last class I was telling you a substance or any matter will have two type particle and wave nature. So that was focused by the scientist De Broglie in 1924. What did he said that any radiation any radiation that is emitted will have a dual character, dual nature. It can be showing particle as well as wave nature. So for that he said an electron should always have momentum and wavelength. Like any other substance having momentum and wavelength, an electron which emits radiation should definitely possess a dual nature which is that it should have both momentum and wavelength. So from that, he designed a formula which is called as de Broglie's relationship formula where lambda is equal to h by mv. We know product of mass and velocity is momentum. So lambda is equal to h by mv, lambda is equal to h by p. From this, any one parameter will be asked for you to find out as this is already known to us. What was his experimental verification was? Any electron when it undergoes diffraction will be giving a phenomenon characteristics of waves. It will have a discrete, discrete characteristics of waves. That was giving us an information or a clue to design an instrument which is called as electron microscope. This electron microscope was playing a very fantastic role in the modern scientific research to experiment or to detect more and more things very clearly, that is very keenly. And what did De Broglie find out from this experiment was every object in motion means any object that is moving will have a wave nature. Any object which is in the motion which has got a movement will always have a wave nature. The wavelength of ordinary objects are so small, they are very shorter that they cannot be detected even through experimental verification. But the la wavelength of electrons or any subatomic particles were able to be detected through experimental calculations. So these were the modern techniques or the further experiments after Bohr's theory got failed. We know why Bohr's theory got failed. The limitations were so simple. He was not able to give the spectrum of other elements other than hydrogen. Only for hydrogen he was able to explain. And he was also not able to give a fine details about the element stability and the movement of electrons when compared with hydrogen and other elements in the periodic table. So that's why this quantum mechanical model came into existence. So I hope you understood de Broglie relationship. Very simple. Any radiation will have dual character that is an electron having momentum and wavelength using the de Broglie formula we were able to find out the wavelength or I can say the momentum of a particular electron. So this is very important for you children. I think you were able to understand today's concept um, with respective videos also. So next class we will be doing the problems in the de Broglie relationship and then we will start with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So stay home, stay safe, um, be happy, make others happy, uh, love you all, missing you all, always thinking about you all and uh, take care children.
थैंक यू बाय बाय